back to Exploring the Word on AFR Talk with Bert Harper. I'm Carl Peets, in for Alex McFarland today. And Bert, what do you say we get back into the Word? We're in Third uh, John, chapter 1, which is the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all the way up to verse 12 now. We are. Talking about a good guy. And his if name you're looking is, for yeah, somebody for your are. for your gal to marry, yes, your, your, your little is, girl, this is the kind of guy you want. Mm-hmm. And it's really one verse about Demetrius. The other is the closing, but this one verse is packed. Let's look now, at before it. you read. Yeah, this, go ahead. Just imagine your name in there. Wouldn't this be great if this was said of you? Now go. Thank you <laughs> for conviction, Carl. Okay, let's go. Verse twelve. Demetrius as a good has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. Now, here we have the word that is repeated, and, and those that listen to me a lot know that I beat this horse to death, and that is look for repeated phrases or repeated words. And here in verse 12, we, had a re, we have a repeated word, testimony. But it's not the only place it, uh, we find it. It's found in verse 3 when it says, I rejoice greatly and testify to the truth. But we also have a, a form of it in verse 6 when it says, those who have borne witness of mm-hmm. your love. Witness mm-hmm. is, a, is a form of that same Greek word. And so this is important, a testimony. What And we touched on it a little bit, those that hear day after day and those that heard yesterday. We touched on this a little bit yesterday. But it's about your testimony, about what uh, is true about you. And really, in verse 12, it's so important. It's not just a testimony from the people, but it's also testimony from the truth itself. In now other that words, is wild. Exactly. What you measure yourself by. Are you going to measure yourself about what others say about you or think about you, or are you going to measure yourself about what the Bible reveals about you? That is something else. And, and even the next level from that, the truth itself, the word itself is testifying that this guy is great. Right here at verse 12, I mean, forever it is in print. This guy <laughs> is has, has got a great reputation, and the word of God itself is saying he has a great reputation. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something, Carl. You're always asking me, so I'm going to reverse <laughs> roles here. How do you determine, uh, as, as you and I look at it, how do we determine someone's testimony according to the word of God for his, our perspective? Can we? Uh, we can a little, but not completely, can we? Well, we can't judge a heart of a person. We don't know what really has happened inside the heart, but we can see uh, on the outside what happens. It's called fruit. When these things start coming out that look more and more like Jesus, and and yes, those could be um, construed, those could be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The angel of light, Satan can dress himself okay, up. Yeah. He, he, he can masquerade. Make, he can yeah. masquerade. Counterfeit. As an, yeah, Counterfeit's counterfeit. the look I'm, what okay. I'm looking for. We can yeah. see counterfeit fruit, and, but at some point down the line, that breaks down. We see, oh, well, we're, here's the real heart of the person. But when we see the fruits of the Spirit coming alive at a person, and you see that love and compassion, and that, that brings us to another point. How do you know? And John talked about this in, in a book or two earlier. How do we know? that uh, we are Christians. How will the world know? By our love for one another. So we have a compassion for the brethren. We have a compassion, uh, a love for the Lord, for his word, for serving others, for teaching others about the truth of Jesus and just encouraging the body, building them up. These are fruits of the spirit that help us to get a good idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably is a Christian. So there are characteristics (laughs) that believers have that, should be common to one another if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, no matter what mm-hmm. circumstance you're, you're in, Carl. Did you say should be? <laughs> yeah, they should be a part of our... Because we struggle, don't we? We Because do. uh, we have Christians that, um, you know, I'm one of them that should look better than they actually do. Well, we have problems, we have uh, tempers, we have, you know, you name it. Uh, but And then we run into people who just seem to just ooze with the Spirit of God, who just... You love to be around them. Uh, they're such an encouragement. They know the word of God, and you know they've been in the presence of Jesus, and you're like, I want to be more like that. That's our goal. Yeah. Now, listen to the rest of this now in verse 12. And we also bear witness, and, and you alluded to this, and we also bear witness. In other words, John is saying we. 
Uh, now, I, I, I think what he is saying, I think you need to look down in verse 14 to get a little bit uh, of what he's saying here when he says we. Verse 14 says, but I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. We'll get to that in a moment. But the uh, next phrase says, peace to you. Our friends greet you. Mm-hmm. In other words, John has friends who are with him, and they all agree concerning the testimony of Demetrius. Demetrius has a good reputation. Yes. They know Demetrius. They're a friend of Demetrius. They'll put their lives on the line for Demetrius. They'll put their reputations on the line for this guy because this guy has proven himself. He really has. To be a, a believer that's strong, that's consistent, that's trustworthy and faithful. Yes. And then he says, and you know that our testimony is true. <laughs> uh, that is powerful. Yeah. I, I think we need to put emphasis on it. You know, when you and I are in the studio and we're making a, a clip for something, I have to be reminded, you know, Bert, put emphasis on something. Well, let me do it here. And you know that our testimony mm-hmm. is true. And, and this is what John is saying. He was letting them know that he is speaking with authority. Not like Diotrephes. Exactly. He didn't know that their testimony exactly. was true. <laughs> and, and John is not one to throw, a, throw around his position, but he is an apostle. He, at that time, he's the only living apostle. So he comes across here in verse 12, and when he says, you know that our testimony is true, he's not just probably talking about Demetrius, but he's also what you inferred. He's talking about Diotrephes as well. You know what I'm saying to you about these men, Mm -hmm. Gaius, what I'm saying to you about Diotrephes, and what I'm saying to you about Demetrius is true, and you can bank on it. And he says, and you know that our testimony is true. It is true. What What I've said is true, and we bear witness of that. When have we lied to you before? You know, we have a reputation with you, too. We are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we take it serious. Right. And so when we share with you the truth of God's Word, we want to make sure that it's it's straight, it's right, it's true. And we've been faithful, John says. And so you could trust us. You know that. We're just reminding you, this guy is good. I'm just saying, this guy is good. good. That's what they're saying. Well, let's look at the closing (laughs) comments here in these uh, last two verses. And these are general. And if you were to turn over back to 2 John, they would look close to familiar. So John is consistent in his Mm -hmm. what we would call the benediction. Uh, Let me read verses 13 and 14 of 3 John. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink. Uh, that's kind of like a preacher preaching. And he said, <laughs> got to come back tonight to get the rest of it. So anyway, he says, I had many more things that I needed to write to you, but I'd rather see you face to face. Matter of fact, when he gets to 14, he, he says, but I hope to see you shortly and we shall speak face to face. Now, I believe this gives two things, mm-hmm. Carl. One, it gives hope, but it also gives warning. It is telling the atrophies, I am coming, and I'm going to set things straight. Mm. That happens sometimes, and it needs to happen. Jesus went into the temple and overturned those tables. He That's was right. setting things straight. Uh, when he talked to them, He, uh, the Pharisees, he is talking about, you're good, you may look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're filled with dead men's bones. Okay? You're dead. Uh, there comes time when the truth speaks and you have to set things right. That's Paul right. would say that as well. So he is given hope and warning with his same visit. Yeah, and that hope part again is uh, there's nothing like true fellowship face-to-face with, with fellow believers, getting into the Word, encouraging, praying with one another, uh, sharing you know, the good news of how God is working in your lives with each other. There's nothing like it. And it energizes you to go out and get back into the world. Reading a letter is one thing, and it's good. The Bible is God's love letter to us. But how much more is it going to be when we see Jesus face to face and fellowship with him one on one? That's going to be something. This world is going to fade away quickly in our eyes when we see Jesus face to face. We're not going to have the worries that we have today. And if you don't know if you're going to see Jesus face to face, we want you to turn to him. We want you to ask him to forgive you of your sin and ask him to come into your life as you surrender your life to him right now. You can be in your car. uh, You can be at your desk, wherever you might be. 
Jesus Christ desires to have this relationship with you, so uh, come to him. Then the last phrase, it says, peace to you, which sounds a little like Paul's mm-hmm. epistles, mm-hmm. peace to you. So I, I believe it was something that was passed down from Jesus on to the other apostles that mm-hmm. he want, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but as I give. Mm-hmm. And so peace is one of those uh, issues that you need to have. I wrote a letter in a response to someone today, and, and the biggest thing I said, I said, we want you, after you know Jesus, we want you to have the peace of God yes. that passes understanding. Seems like John wants them to have the peace, that kind of peace as well. Well, peace is what makes it, gives us the strength to make it through. It gives us hope. It gives us the strength to press on because we're not done with this journey yet. And uh, there's a whole lot more still to come. Hey, really? and, and, you know, uh, trials, tribulations, but victories and, and opportunities to share with others about Jesus too. Time is, is running out, but we're still in the race. Well, let me ask this. Does peace and joy kind of go together? You yeah. know, we talked oh, about yeah. the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. If you don't have any peace, you don't have any joy. Yeah, they, you yeah. can't have one without the other. I, mm-hmm. I think so too. Mm-hmm. The last phrase is here says this, our friends greet you. Now, I, I know that's just a, a little bit, but that's different. Uh, and then he says, greet the friends by name. We talked about peace to you sounds like Paul. This doesn't sound like Paul. Paul was always given the list. Mm-hmm. He would usually give the list of the people who were with him and would also usually say three or four names of the people of the church or the people that was with the people he was writing. But John says, uh, and I love this, he says, greet all of them. In, in other words, John didn't want to leave anybody out. <laughs> so he says, just in general, greet their friends by name. But he lets them know he's coming to them, and he's going to greet them, and he's going to give them a, a greeting face-to-face. Mm-hmm. And the word says, in a short time, I'll see you shortly. So it sounds like John's anticipating this mm-hmm. visit mm-hmm. as much as the people would anticipate him coming. Now, did he ever make it, do you know? Well, I there's no evidence of it, but mm-hmm. there's no evidence that he did not. Uh, my opinion is he made it with, with, the, with the way he was writing mm-hmm. and being that definite. It sounds like he already had his bus ticket punched, <laughs> and uh, well, however he was going. But I do believe he was going. Amen. What a great study. John, uh, the third book of John, John 3, 3 John, one chapter. It does get confusing. It's the three epistles of John, not the gospel, and uh, we've covered it now, and and tomorrow we're going to move on to something new we'll to find out what it is. Next, we're going to take your phone calls. If you got a question, give us a call at 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840.